Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Mary presents Strengthening Our Will to Love, filmed on the 12th of July 2014 in Monkeray, New South Wales, Australia. Well, before I introduce the topic of my talk to you this afternoon, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First question, what is it that governs the universe that we live in? Joy? God's laws. God's laws, yep. And what is the basis of all of God's laws? Vanessa? That would be love. Love, yeah. And what is it that governs everything in our natural environment? Eloisa? Love as well. Yep, yep, very good. Top of the class, all of you already. <laughs> um, what is it that governs the workings of the human soul? Die? Love. Love, yep. What is it from God's perspective that is the basis of any true relationship, relate, friendship, partner relationship? What, is, for, what forms the basis of that relationship? Christiana? Love. Love. In fact, isn't it love that governs absolutely everything that we could think of, that we have contact with, our human soul, our human body, the natural environment, everything around us. And isn't discovery of new truth dependent on this magical thing called love as well? Because actually if we strive to seek knowledge and don't have a foundation of love, how far are we going to get? Not that far. We're going to be very limited. And in fact, unless we understand love, we won't ever have a complete understanding of anything that we strive to know about. So, it makes sense that we should probably try and learn something about love. Do you agree? Yeah. Laura? Thank you. So. What you just were you just saying that when you've got an understanding of God's love, um, and then you said something about the change um, desire to. I'm just trying. I I think I've just I just missed a little bit. It's all right. I'll repeat about it. With, when you've got a firm understanding of God's like God's love, then change. Didn't even mention no, change yet. Okay. No, but I was saying that if we base our pursuit of knowledge. So say we want to discover how the human body works, for example. Next year is Karen. She studied medicine. How many years till you became a practicing doctor, Karen? Oh, I did a six-year training course. Six-year training course. And did you have to do four years at university before then? No, this was in New oh, Zealand. This is, yep. So six years before you could become a doctor. And in all of that knowledge, how many courses were there about the human soul? None. <laughs> <laughs> None. And so, and what about what is love 101? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. None of that? Didn't cover it? You're actually, you're actually studying for your whole life. It didn't come up in my whole life. So. Yeah. <laughs> your whole, you know. Position. Yeah, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Like, when, when you were growing up in your family, did someone say, hey, let me sit down and talk to you about what is the nature of love? This is how you truly give love. This is how, what it feels like to receive love. And then when you went to school, your first day of kindy, did anyone talk to you about what's love? This is love, this isn't love, this is what love feels like? All the way through school, how many people here went to university? Spent a lot of time attaining knowledge, didn't we? 
And we thought it was good knowledge. Hey, they've done studies on this stuff. I read a paper. 25 people did a trial. This stuff is true. We know it now. I've got a sign on the wall that tells me. I know stuff. <laughs> but then when we come to understand who we really are and how many things that we just talked about are governed by love, what do we come to know? In all the medical training, is that, is that now defunct almost? Because it pays no attention to the true causes of illness. And in the workings of our family, everything that we thought was the exchange of love actually has a different name now, doesn't it? Addiction, codependence, all these kind of things now that we, we realise, wow, shit, I don't know anything about love. <laughs> Is that how you feel? Yeah, yeah. So I reckon it makes good sense that we need to learn about this love thing, hey? Yeah. So, how are we going to do it? Well, no, let's first, before we talk about that, let's examine life right now. Now, Jesus already took you through some interesting um, statistics this morning, didn't he, about desiring change. Now, if we were to draw some more comparisons, and given that we've just pointed out that since we were tiny all the way through what we thought was education by our family, through schooling, some of us university, some of us got a trade, some of us went to some courses, some, we, we've, we've been constantly, if you think about it, engaged in learning, haven't we? And in none of that was there any real content about the truth about love, was there? Zero. So, since we've heard divine truth, how much have we been engaged really in understanding what love is since then? Very much. Have we tried to educate ourselves in the same way that we were educating ourselves before? Through the intellect, knowledge, I'm going to get this, what are the laws, what are the rules, okay, I think I know it now. And did that really give us a knowledge of love in our soul? No, no. So if we, if we took a collective, like this is not, they'll teach you at university, this is not the way to do statistics, but <laughs> if we went, okay, here's a group of 60 or 70 people, if we look at their life collectively and we look at how much training and education they've had in love, it all, and even to how much they're spending in their day-to-day -day lives in the pursuit of understanding love, we've got to say it'd be nearly zero to one percent, would you say, of our time, of our life, that we have actually been gaining knowledge and understanding from a soul perspective what love is. Okay. Oh, I'm all funny. <laughs> okay, so zero to one percent. Now, given that we do know, because we all just, you all just told me really easily that everything is governed by love, and we all agreed it's probably a good idea to try and start learning about this love, how are we going to shift from this zero to one percent of knowledge and effort spent in understanding and giving and receiving love to doing that to 100% of the time, seeking knowledge about love, growing our soul in love, giving real love to the people around us and receiving love from God and from other people. How are we going to shift from here to here? Diana? Engage in a real and ongoing relationship with the person that created me and knows about love. <laughs> That's a very good one. What are you going to have to do to engage that relationship? What thing are you going to have to harness inside of yourself? Uh, my will. Your will, indeed, your will. So this space, if, we, if this is a, oh look, this is so far away from proper statistics, but anyway, um, if we thought of this as a, as a chart, as a curve that we have to traverse, zero to one percent 
being, we have zero knowledge and understanding of love within us, or even intellectually, it's pretty shaky, really, isn't it? To 100% of the time seeking love, understanding more and more of love as we're seeking it, and seeking to educate ourselves, really, in what love is like. This space is going to be traversed through the use of our will. So what is will? How could you define will? Laura? Um, it's, it's a strengthening of a desire to actually wa want, want to know, want to find out. Actually, it's a bit the reverse. When we have the will, our desire strengthens. So okay. that's not will. When we engage will, desire strengthens. So if, if I engage, if I have a willful desire to eat chocolate all of the time, <laughs> I will, I was, yeah, my, my desire grows. If my will is, I'm going to avoid my feelings with chocolate, my desire for that chocolate, through the roof. So can you see that will is the basis of desire? And will can be used in a direction that is loving or unloving. Can will be used if on the same topic, like if I want to really desire to know what God's love is like, but I don't want to let go of the false belief of what I think love is because of the pain that's associated with that, can I will to know the truth while I'm not willing to release what I thought was love that's not love? No, but we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. So let's just see if we can define will and then we'll get on to talking about the implications of it, okay? Rachel, do you want to have a go? A soul-based quality? It is indeed a soul-based quality. Now, I'm just going to write these up. So, it's a soul-based quality. So it's something that is in, is in my soul. And what's the nature of everything that's inside of my soul? We, we've, we've heard this a lot of times before. What's the nature of it? Matt? Uh, it's emotional. It's emotional. Which is, in opposite, which is meaning it's not... If it's Intellect. emotional, it's, it's not, not intellectual. intellectual. And by that I mean, it's not just a thought, it's a feeling-based experience, our will. Okay, anything else you can think of to describe will? Vanessa? Um, I'm just going to say I have no idea. Yeah. And what I think at the moment it is, is determination. So Yes. It's... And that's what I want to contrast will with, willpower. What we would... What we would have called willpower. Who's familiar with willpower? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so how, given even just what we've got about will written up there, how could we contrast willpower with will, do you think? If you feel about it, how does it feel different? Eloisa? It's pretty forceful, like I make it happen. Yes, just like Vanessa said. It's determined. determined yeah. yep. So it takes effort, doesn't it? Huge effort. And it's exhausting yep. to actually um, maintain it. Yes. So can we say effort is required and it's an increasing amount of effort, which is why we get exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. So why is effort required? When you think like, well, you know, no, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. It's going to work. Why doesn't it work? Helga? Willpower is intellect-based. Well, is it intellect-based? This is a good thing to discover. Okay. If you go to Mel beside you, can anything be purely intellect-based? Not really. If we know the soul governs everything, 
How can something just simply reside in our intellect? It can't. So what, where does willpower come from? Is that, now I change your question, Mel, is that um, all right? No, I was just thinking in relation to effort is required. Yep. The reason effort is required is that because there's a denial of what, you know, there's an avoidance. Yeah. In fact, we've made a soul-based decision yeah. to try to act in opposition to the will that already exists. Yeah. And often, oh, I'm just thinking for me. Just pause for a minute. Oh, sorry, yeah. Just receive what I said and then we'll go, yeah. go back to you, okay? Because everyone was just like grappling with what I just said. So, um, oh, now I lost it. <laughs> oh, willpower is a soul-based decision to tr attempt, attempt to override the soul's will that is already in place. So can you relate to that? Can you relate to almost trying to engage the divine love path with willpower? Is it going to work? Okay, I'll go back to you, Mel. Did you still want to...? Um, oh, well, I was just going to add for me, um, and I feel that, wrongly, I feel that the willpower is my will. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I want to highlight to all of you. A lot of us are confused between willpower and will. We think, oh, it's a decision, I'm going to do it. That's willpower. And that's already ignoring the will that you, that's already residing in your soul. Because the, what I want to tell you about will is that it doesn't require effort. It happens in a relaxed way. It's seamless. You just go for it. And you can kind of relate to that, can't you, if you think about using your will to do certain things in your life, where it's just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. Now, a few hands up. I'll get to you in just a second. I'll just kind of put no effort. And the other thing that I mentioned about will earlier was that we can use it in harmony with love or out of harmony with love or negatively or positively. Okay, Barbara. When I use my willpower, I think it comes from an angry stance. Um, that's the effort required because it comes from an anger-based um, Well, it actually, step. it does, it comes from a decision, if you like, to say, this is what I really want, but I don't, I, for some reason, I don't want to acknowledge that, I don't want to go there, so I'm going to put my foot down with myself and... Sometimes it's because I want to deny what's there and it gets increasingly hard to deny what's there. But sometimes it is because we've been taught as kids to just be, be hard with yourself to get the thing done. And that's, that's why it feels angry because you are actually being really hard and angry with yourself. You're saying you're not allowed to be how you are, you're going to be like this. And then you also enforce that willpower on other people when you've got that stance. Yeah, your own kids, the people around you, because you think, no, this is the way to live. This is what will is. Come on, do it. Deny what's already inside of you. And you guys, how's that going to work out? You know that. You know how it's going to work out, don't you? Given that the soul always has dominance over everything, it's never going to work in the long term, is it? It's just going to create, honestly, an internal war battle going on inside of yourself until you reach a state of exhaustion where you're finally willing to say, God, this is what's in me. This is the state of play right now. Yeah. Matt, you had your hand up. Um, I, think, I think a lot of the time when, when my will is to do something pretty nasty or like selfish or taking or whatever from that's pretty hard to admit i don't want to admit that a lot of the time it doesn't feel very it feels exactly. awful exactly exactly so that's about looking at your investments you have in not acknowledging your will do you know the funny thing about will is mm. that the more we want to deny it exists the more likely we are to actually act in it which is kind of scary isn't it 
If you think about how much we're used to trying to suppress everything that we judge, so just like you said, nasty, dirty, terrible, the way things operate in this universe and in your soul is that the more you try to fight it, what's going to happen? God's laws are going to try to bring you truth and it's going to take increasing amounts of willpower and it's never going to work in the end. So ironically, we kind of have to turn the tables on what we think we should do. We think we should use willpower and suppress it, but actually, if we soften and understand what the will is right then, we have the power to change it. But look, we're getting a bit off course. So do, did you have another question? Anyone just on that topic, will versus willpower? Alwyn? Um, I'm kind of confused about it, but I think it might be about control and self-reliance somehow. Willpower? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to ignore what's already inside of us and dominate it with our own... It's, it's very self-reliant. If you think about what I just said, when we recognise the will, we're in more of a state of truth and immediately we're more open to relying on God in that place, if you like. But what drives control and self-reliance? Fear. Yeah. Okay, Dave? Mary, I'm a little confused, like will is a soul-based quality and willpower is um, a soul-based decision to try and over override the will. It's nearly like the way I'm seeing it is that the, that the soul's kind of split in two. Well, it's not split in two. If you feel about it, it's, it's really based on your emotional situation, isn't it? Say for me, I, wanna, I don't want to feel my fear. So that's, that's my will. And then I think, well, then naturally, what flows from will, and I'm going to add this to our list, is words, actions, choices, decisions. So while my will is, I don't want to feel my fear, my words, actions, choices and decisions will all be in harmony with that will. I'm going to seek out addictive relationships, men to make me feel safe, I'll want lots of sugary carbs, all these things. And then when I think, no, this is wrong, I'm judging myself for this fear, and there is, it's all emotional, I'm, the judgment of the fear, the judgment, the fear feeling that I can't experience fear, all of that's emotional. So I go, hmm, I have another soul-based feeling, I'm not going to do it, so I'm... Oh, I just lost myself a bit. But anyway, we, we say, I'm, not go I'm going to override this choice. That's another emotional decision. So it's like there's all these emotional things that are in conflict within our soul. Can't you feel that? A little bit, yes. Yeah, I feel that a lot. Like, and it's my judgments that drive my desire to use willpower, when I judge what my will is, and that's not, I shouldn't make that as a blanket statement, that's just me. <laughs> There's a lot of things that might make you engage willpower against your own will. But it's an emotional choice. I, I don't know about you guys. Can you see that if you're not at one with God, you're going to have a lot of emotions inside of you that are out of harmony with love? Can you see that some of them might try to interact with each other, if you like, and try to shut one down because basically... We, so it's all emotional decisions, if you like, that, it, that you're engaging with willpower. Does everyone get that? Because I kind of talk myself in a circle and... Diana? I had a, a realisation just recently that I had a belief that my will was broken when I was a child, and then I realised that I'd just been taught to manipulate my will, and that's how I've used it ever since. It's just the shocking yeah. truth. Well, all of you have a will. You're engaging it every single second of the day. 
even if you're engaging it to be passive, that's, that's an engagement. You're just going, oh, I'll do what you say. Oh, I'll do what you think. Oh, I'll do it because I'm afraid. That, you're still making choices. You're still engaging will. Yeah. So this, this idea that will can be broken can't happen. Soul design doesn't allow for that fault. Yeah. We can try to disown it. Now, lots of us do that. And lots of us try to disown it through addiction. And like I just said, oh, well, they told me I had to, or I was too afraid to oppose them, or, well, it, everyone else was doing it. And that's all just a way of trying to disown your will. But God seeing the way you use your will, it's, it's imprinted on your soul. It's, it's a reflection of your soul is probably a better explanation. So it's, it's a reflection, even if you like, of your soul condition. Fabio? I found that um, with willpower, fear, the f- fear that I have of what my will is makes me use all that strength and willpower. Absolutely. So, and fear is the thing that underpins our judgment. Mm. So when we're very afraid of what's inside of us, we will very often not even try and discover what's inside of us. Mm. Often what is inside of us is not as bad as we think, yeah. but we try and engage willpower to shut it all down. And again, willpower is this emotional decision to try to oppose our will. Laura? So is it like um, the the willpower is more of that decision-making, like I want to feel this, I want to feel this, and then as soon as the emotion comes up and all of a sudden then we use our will to not feel it? Your will is already engaged to not feel it. Before the willpower even began yeah your your willpower you know when you're talking about i want to feel it i want to feel it i want to feel it that's you avoiding the feeling that you have that i don't want to feel it and a lot of the things that corny was alluding to in his talk about the belief that you can't cope or the feeling of no faith they're they're the things that are underpinning your will at the moment so when you go i want to feel it i want to feel it i want to feel it that's your willpower but that's trying to override the will that's already there to say, I can't feel it, I don't want to feel it. And then when I call the truth and I say, I don't want to feel it, it feels like a full stop. It's like, yeah, I don't want to feel it. And then I'm like, I can't just leave it like that because that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about how we can strengthen our will because that's exactly the topic of my talk today. Question, Eloisa? Yep. I'm, I'm still feeling a bit confused about will. Okay. From what you've said, though, and I just want to clarify that I've gone on the right page, it's basically what I really want. It's my true wants, desires, yes. like yes. what if I was being really true. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I didn't write desires up there. Yeah, it's our, our soul-based desire, if I can call it that. So it's kind of what's really in my soul, what I'd really like to say, what I'd really like to do, all of those things. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yep. Clear? Everyone clear? David? Hi. Um, Hi. I just wanted to know, um, so that your condition determines your will. Um, and then... Well... Uh, is that is that... Because then I'm curious about where free will comes in, because it sounds like there wouldn't be any. I know there is, but that's just my confusion well what governs your it's probably more accurate to say what governs your soul condition um what governs my soul condition are we saying the will governs it your use of will use of will okay yes so when i said will is kind of a reflection of your soul condition it's because your use of will has determined your soul condition okay does that make sense to everyone makes more sense yeah yeah yes Thanks for clarifying. That's good to clarify both you guys. Okay. All right. So that gets me on to the topic of the talk, which is how to strengthen our will to love. Gosh, that's useless. So who thinks this is just going to be 
pretty easy, strengthen your will to love, she'll give me four dot points, I'll go home, we all sorted. It's much more fun than that. All right. Uh, well, let's call it strengthening the will to love. So, guess what we're going to have to engage in order to strengthen our will to love? And keep in mind, I want to talk about strengthening our will to love because where does the pain and suffering come from in the world? Eloisa? My lack of desire to love, my lack of will to love. Yeah, collectively, everyone's lack of will to love, isn't it? And God's laws operating upon that to try and expose that for us, to expose to us the negative consequences that happen when we use our will to not love, if you like, to oppose love, to honour fear, all of those things. So that's why I want to talk to you today about strengthening your will to love. Jesus and Cornelius have spoken to you about change. And this is the kind of change I reckon you probably want to make to understand what love really is, to learn about love, to receive love, to reflect love, all of those things. So what are we going to have to engage in order to strengthen our will to love or to come to understand love better? Paul? We need to be honest with ourselves. Yes, beautiful. First point. We actually have to engage our will to do these things. So, but our first point is that given the amount of unhappiness in our life, given the lack of good education we've had about love, we really have to face the arrogant belief that we already know what love is. And many of us walk around operating thinking that we understand what love is. Would you agree with that? Okay. Gosh, this is not such a good pen. And I'm going to say it's an arrogant belief. If you think about how you behave, even in your friendships and things, you're, you're often operating under rules that you think are loving, uh, and even the fact that there's rules indicates that there's some issues. Yeah, arrogant belief that, you know... Is. Okay, next step. Any ideas? It's all right, I can go. Eloisa? She's there. I reckon it would be good to know what love actually is, like God's version, not my old crappy version. Absolutely. But we're going to have to do some things before we're even going to be able okay. to hear anything about that from God. Yeah. Yeah. So if we go to Alwyn. Oh, yep. Uh, develop some reliance on God. How hard is that going to be? Very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go, let's go for a bit simpler. All right, Nina. Um, for me, it's faith that love is actually something real, you know, that so how are we going to get faith? Confronting the disillusion we've experienced around love. Yep. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it is because, you know, it's, it's maybe not very obvious. It's very obvious if you're sincerely engaging the, the process, but it's very personal and every one of you has to do it. And that is deconstructing. So using your will to deconstruct the facade. And giving up all the things that we usually associate with love right now, giving up our addictions, willfully doing that. And now I really want to stress to you as we go through this, our will to love 
is not even going to emerge until we do some of these things on this list. It's not like you can just go, oh, I'm, I'm going to be loving now because you already know that, hey, you, you haven't even dealt with your facade. How can you even be real with everyone? You haven't even let go of those addictions that you associate with love. So how can you be loving? Oh, <laughs> Uh, deconstructing the facade and letting go of addictions. My soulmate talked to me before this talk about, Be beware of blanket statements, Mary. You often make blanket statements and expect people to fill in the dots. So I'm up, I'm up top thinking about that all the time. Okay, so the second thing we're going to have to do is deconstructing the facade and letting go of addictions. And we're going to spend a lot of time on that tomorrow and the next day, giving you practical ideas, a lot of like information about how to practically do that and what's involved. Paige? So, Mary, do you mean by that that we, that we really honestly look at where we're using our will right now? Yes. Yes. Like, what am I doing with it? Absolutely. And most of the time, most of us are doing this, living in facade and getting our addictions met. And I'm probably saying even more than that, Paige. I'm saying, yes, you've got to look at that. You've got to be honest about that. But until you start, to, it's like your will. Remember Corny drew the crossroads. He said, here's fear and here's God's truth. It's like if we had another crossroads, I suppose you could call it. If if at the end of one path or travelling down one path is facade and addictions, which is really based on fear anyway, and the will to love is... and Can you see how when you're in your facade, how are you engaging in any will to love? You're doing the opposite, aren't you? You're, you're invested in other people giving you, having a certain perception of you, so they, you want things from people. And in your addictions, what do you want? You want whatever it is. You want a nice feeling, you want to feel safe, whatever. How is that loving? How is you not taking responsibility for what's already inside of you, an expression of love? So you, while you're engaged in facade and addictions, you, you, you can't be engaged in the will to love. And that feels confronting, doesn't it? Like when I sat down to do this talk, I was like, right, okay, dot point it up, literally. <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's give these people some keys to go home with, you know? Like, let's just do it. And we will later in the talk get onto some kind of practical analogies, if you like. But I sat down and I thought about, okay, Mary, back here on Earth, meets her soulmate six years ago, things were fairly tumultuous. Where was my will to love right then? If I'm sincere and honest, it was buried deep, really. I wanted the facade of love. I wanted to believe I was a loving person. I wanted to believe I knew what love was. And I was wandering around interacting with people, feeling like, yeah, this is what love is. But when I really felt, now that I've actually developed a little, uh, no, there was no will to love there, not expressed. It was not there. And it, while I still desperately wanted to hold on to my facade and my addictions, I, I'm sorry, it, it, it didn't have a chance. And this is where I got really emotionally confronted writing the outline for this talk. It was, I, it was really emotional for me thinking, yeah, crap. I have gone through so much stuff, actually. There's been a lot of, like, icky, gooey crap that I was carrying around that I've had to face this last six years. And if I'm really honest, my will to love could not even come into a sensation inside of me until I dealt with this and begun the next step. What do you think the next step is? After we do this, we're going to get rid of this stuff, guys. I'm not saying I'm totally free of this stuff, but you've got to, you've got to be like actively engaged in deconstructing this stuff before you're going to find any will to love. And when I say actively, I don't mean just chatting about it, challenging yourself once a week. I mean for six years of my life, day by day, 
I have been engaged in those two things. And I would say in the last three or four months, I went, wow, <laughs> I know I really want to love that person. There's nothing in it for me. Wow, I really feel some love. I feel some sincerity coming into my life. So when I say deconstructing the facade and dealing with your addictions, I'm not really kidding around. <laughs> All right. Okay, number three. What happens after you do that? Laura? Um, well, it feels like if you deconstructed your facade, you would have gone right back to facing the, or feeling the reality of um, the love that was given that wasn't love and feel that, to which then you, I mean, that would be an overwhelm experience because you've been living a lie, the hurt, ev everything that comes with that, but then it would almost feel like you've actually released um, something so deep that love would, there would be a natural... Um, yeah, I feel, Laura, often you get engaged in kind of imagining it when you haven't engaged it. So Totally, I haven't yeah. engaged in and it. And I know you know that. Yeah. But just be careful of that because you're sort of trying to imagine something and it's much simpler than that actually, you know. It's, I, what I feel in you often is this desire for it all to be okay in the end and kind of live in the story of it, I suppose. You love... You love the concepts of the divine love path, and yet your will is kind of saying, Duh! and often when you get engaged in the concepts, it's because you're trying to avoid the will. Does that make sense? You're trying to kind of intellectually use like, all these devices to get over where your will is really directed. And the imagination of what it would be, what it would be like as opposed it, to the real feelings of what it would yeah. be like. And the imagination not quite reliable yet because you haven't, done this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying I don't want your input, just reflecting on something yeah, I see. Thank you. Let me, let me um, say what happens next, what we need to do. Uh, we need to connect, and it's similar to what you said, Laura. Connect to the hurt feelings inside of us. And let's just say it as plainly as that, and engage Sincerely, repentance and forgiveness. And again, uh, forgiveness, yep. Let's not get into that too much because throughout the week we're going to be talking a lot about those things as well. So experiencing the hurt and engaging repentance and forgiveness. Then, after these things, after we've really started to take some serious steps in these ways, then we can begin to engage our spiritual will. And spiritual will is what? What's spirit, true spirituality about? It's about love, isn't it? So this is where we get to starting to engage our will to love. And many of you, as I alluded to earlier, you've engaged your will to do other things. You've built houses, you've gotten degrees, you've um, had babies, you've travelled the world, you've climbed mountains, you've done all these things, and that was all an expression of your will. So you, you have a will that's already quite developed. It's just whether you... And you've been given a lot of information, if you think about it, on how to engage this will towards love and to love, but it's now really a question of do you want to? And how are we going to strengthen it? Once we find it, how are we going to do it? So let's talk about that. Now I'm going to ask for a participant from the audience, Cornelius. Oops, I shouldn't be rubbing that off. Where is he? Oh, he's missing. I'll have to ask for someone else. Well, that'll be interesting. Yeah, you can do it, honey. Do it. Would someone be able to do the camera for AJ? He's coming. Oh, he's coming. 
came and sneak off for <laughs> <You> a pee. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to make a grand timing. entrance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the footsteps? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to we're going to talk about strengthening our will to love. We're going to use the analogy. Now I just rub myself out. So what I want you to think about is, let's imagine your will to love like a muscle. Is that okay? It's a muscle we want to grow. And I've asked Cornelius up here because he's engaged growing his muscles over his life, haven't you? They're shrinking now, but I used to, yeah. <laughs> a little but, bit. Yeah. yeah, I have, yeah. What did, you, what did you used to do? I'm just going I used to, to do my some eyes. weight work. Yeah, yep. so kind of bodybuilding sort of. Yeah, I was actually curious. Just not so much the bodybuilding, but what I could shape. I could actually change things yep. in my body. I could sculpt almost. I could change a certain area I wanted to change. I was just interested in watching it grow. Watching it grow. How I could do it. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay, so, sorry. Um, what did you do to grow your muscle? Well, I had to go to the gym and get myself down there for a start. And then got the weights I thought felt like a lift, and so I started moving them. And I wanted to make sure they were full movements too, not just little, get the heaviest thing and just try and do little things, but try and do a full movement to make the whole of that muscle grow. And I had to increase the weights eventually as well to yep. put it under more stress to try and take it to its I can't take any more thing and then just go one more if I can. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. So you had to move the muscle. Yep. And you had to overload it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me write up on here how to grow a muscle. So you had to engage overwhelming stimuli. Can we call it that? Uh-huh. Yep. Or overloading, let's call it. You had to overload your muscle. And you also had to repeat it from Constantly, what you just said. Yes. Yeah. So yep. repeat it. So it had to be repeating. Who else has done uh, weights training? Yep. Can you vouch for, for my witness? Is he credible? <laughs> <laughs> so you had to, to grow your muscle, you had to. Uh, overload it yep. with stimulus and you had to go even when you thought you couldn't go anymore you just, just went one more to fail to failure yeah. okay yeah um meaning that you couldn't lift it once again that's the failure couldn't get yep. one more out of it yeah <laughs> screaming and trying but just couldn't yep. yeah okay and you had to repeat it constantly yes okay and while this was going on what did you when you weren't in the gym mm -hmm. what were you putting into your body Oh, a couple of steroids and other things like that. But no, I wasn't doing that at all. <laughs> no, I was eating lots of good food. Cause, okay. Because the muscle is part of the body system. That's the way it replenishes the muscles too. So while it's going under all this work and stress, it needs to have goodness going back into it as well to help it recover. Yep. Yeah. So you had nourishing food? Yeah, good food, yeah. Yep. Not junk foods or anything. Yep, yeah. yep. Because you knew that nourishing... What you were putting in was going to help the muscle build more. Yeah, you know, all the good vitamins and stuff. Yep. Okay. And what about drinks-wise? Yeah, a few beers. <laughs> and, uh, there's always water. It's always taking lots of water down the gym, constantly work, and also flushing afterwards as well. And why is water important when you're bodybuilding? Well, muscles, it's got a lot of water. The body's full of water, really, too. Yeah. It's always constantly water coming out of me, so I've got a need to keep replacing it. Yep. So sweating. you're sweating and stuff. Yeah. And so I you... want to love my body and I want to go into dehydration. So. Yep. yep. Okay. So, so you had water, drank a lot of water, I'm assuming. All right. Thank you, Cornelius. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So we can see to grow a muscle, we have to overload it with stimulus. We have to repeat the action. We have to give our body nourishing food and we have to drink a lot of water. How on earth is she going to relate this to growing our will? <laughs> so how to grow will. What do you think I'm going to say to you about that? 
What's, what, if we think of the analogy of the muscle and overloading stimuli, what might we have to do to grow our will if it's, if it's in the same vein, if it's a good analogy? Teresa? That's where the overwhelm comes in. That is where the overwhelm comes in. But if we're growing our will to love, and let me put that up there, how to grow will to love, how would, what would we be doing? What would the overwhelm entail? No? Vanessa, you have an idea? Uh, instead of avoiding situations you might normally avoid, actually go into them and allow yourself to see what comes of that. So would you say you might embrace opportunities to love? And you might, they might overwhelm you if you've been previously avoiding them, but you would embrace as many opportunities as you can to love and to learn about love. And you would allow yourself to be overwhelmed. You would do it with increasing stimuli, so you would do it in a way that stretches you emotionally. Do you see what I mean there? So, uh, let's say stretching ourselves emotionally. So these comfort zones that Cornelius mentioned. To love. Taking opportunities to love. How does everyone feel about that? Paige? Is that like having the intention, so you embrace an opportunity with the intention to love or learn about love? Because a lot of opportunities that you have, like I know for me, I don't always know if what I'm going to embrace is going to be a loving thing that I then end up doing. Can I give you an example? It's funny that you asked me this question. I'm just I can thinking think of, of Kenya. Two as, as off the top of this. my head yeah. where you have embraced an opportunity to love. You've yeah. made a choice. You've recognised I've got choices in my life. I'm going to make a choice to love and it's going to stretch and overwhelm me. Yeah. One was when you and Kerry went to Kenya recently. How did you feel going into that trip? It stretched us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But what was your desire? Yeah, we wanted to love. You wanted, wanted to, to love. You yeah. wanted to put love into action, didn't you? Yeah. And now more recently when you've been taking and dealing with all the bookings for this group, why did you do that? You told me why you wanted to do it. And Kerry told me afterwards what, why she'd do it again and what was it? An, an opportunity to learn about love. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's a perfect example. Thanks for demonstrating my point. <laughs> so you took an action where you went, I want to learn more about love. I want to embrace an opportunity to love my brothers and sisters. You know what? I don't feel very qualified and I know I've got a lot to learn, but I'm going for it. And I'm going to, both of you, I... Well, I've had a lot of contact with you through both of those experiences and you were like, give me the feedback, bring it, I'm happy, yes, oh, that's so confronting, no, oh, yes, bring me more, give me more. So you embraced it in every way. You went, I'm going to use my choices that I have in my day-to-day -day life to embrace an opportunity to love and then when the feedback comes, I'm going to welcome it. And do you think you learnt anything about love and your will to love in that process? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's go back to our mil will muscle. What do you think about this repeating uh, part of growing the muscle? How does that relate to our will to love? How are we going to do it? Diana? Just keep doing it until I've learned everything there is to learn, <laughs> which is overall endless. So I'm going to stay engaged, aren't I? And what if, like, I'm sure the day after Cornelius went to the gym, he had a few sore muscles. Did he at that point just go, oh, stuff it. I'm not doing that again. It was hurt. I'm not, I'm not up for that. 
No, he, he had a willful desire for, to learn and grow in a different way, so he went back. So he didn't give up, repeated the action. Matthew? Does that kind of happen with us when we engage something like, with, like something that involves the will to love but we have some painful feedback? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I see it all the time. You know, where you guys go, yes, no, yeah, right, I'm leaving the seminar, Jesus just like totally inspired me, here I go out of my life, boom, I'm doing it, I'm telling the truth and I'm going to, you know, go volunteer and then, oh crap, there's an angry woman like my mum and, oh, you know, nobody likes me, I'm going back to my normal life. And if you think about that, how often does that happen and how rapidly does that happen? That's because you're not growing this muscle. And you're not having faith either in the way you were made, in the way God's universe operates on love, all these things that you can tell me really easily. You're not testing that. You're not testing it. And you, in order to grow the muscle, Cornelius had to test his muscle. And you're going to have to take some action. You might feel a bit uncomfortable. Check in with yourself. Is this, is this coming from a will to love? Right. Probably might get a bit uncomfortable. How, how, how much is my staying power? Okay. Oh, now, what do you think? How can I draw an analogy with nourishing food to grow a muscle to our will to love? Felix? Uh, love of myself? Yes. In a way, how do you love yourself? Um, I suppose when I... Uh, feel or see something that um, I really don't like about myself or really don't want to feel that I just um, uh, don't or don't project um, rage at myself like or for example recently I felt heaps of rage at myself I didn't okay, I won't stop you there um, a, so you're talking about kind of internal things I'm thinking about some physical things here I want to be practical and personal with you guys this next nine days so let's go to Matt see what I think there's probably about, what, 900 hours of material on YouTube <laughs> that okay, probably that fits into that category. <laughs> provide a bit of spiritual nourishment. So what is that really? You're engaging with, thing, with material that upholds love, that teaches about love. So we're, we're looking at uh, material. What, what else that upholds love? Any other ideas? Dave? Give myself time to reflect on what I'm experiencing and learning. Yes, give myself time, engage in activities where I can connect to myself, make space in my house, make space in my day, go for a walk, engage in things that are going to move me in the direction of love, teach me about love. Give me more opportunities to love. When I'm so busy running around with my to-do task, my control addiction, how many opportunities do I even create to love? So there's some shake-ups that can happen in our day-to-day -day life and our lifestyle, hey? So uh, time, uh, space, yep. Yeah. Who else had their hand up? I think Mel, was it? Um, I would engage God in the process and pray. And Yeah, so um, can we call that, so that's a relationship, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. a relationship with someone very reliable when it comes to love. Yeah. What about our other relationships? Are oh, you partners and children, like all of your brothers and sisters. Yeah, and, but would you be engaging relationships where there was clearly a lack of love? No. no. But I'm one of those people that you wouldn't want to engage with. <laughs> Oh, Mel. <laughs> it depends upon your will at any moment, exactly. my sister. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we'll be engaging in relationships, be it with God or the people around us, that support us in this will to love. Make sense? What about 
hobbies. How would they fit into this? Joy? <laughs> Lily loves this job because she gets to stay warm, hey? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I was thinking about that one with the first one, like material that upholds love. I'd want to be in activities that uphold love, so my desires. Yep. And then it would be difficult to go to a job like Jesus was talking about before where, where it's not loving to yourself or anybody else. Or others. Yeah. Or others. Yeah. Mm. So you're basically wanting to refine your lifestyle almost, aren't you? Yes. To support this growth of a will mm. to love. Mm. Yeah. Because you've got to be loving with me first, like almost. Like... Yeah, yeah. But I think it's funny how a lot of you guys are hot on being loving to yourself. Like you say it a lot. I'm not saying you're very good at being loving to yourself. But often I feel like there is a belief that if I feel comfortable, I'm being loving to myself. And what I'm saying here is really, no, as you grow your will to love, you're going to feel uncomfortable a lot of the time. So, you know, you're going to be biting off opportunities like standing in front of 70 people talking about the will to love and waking up in the morning going, I've forgotten everything. I can't remember a thing. You know, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? So be careful of this loving yourself thing. That's all I'm trying to highlight to you because I know a lot of people go, oh, I've got to be loving to myself or just sit in the, my room, listen to classical FM, like zen out, and I'm loving myself. And it is, it is not the truth. It is not the truth. If you are sitting in there and your addiction to avoid the conflict that's outside the bedroom door, yeah, yeah, you're not strengthening your will to love. So, okay, let's move on to water because I even have more to say after this. So um, what do you think I would be, what, what would represent, Cornelius said he wanted to drink water because it was going to, his, his body was made up of a lot of water and he needed to replenish it, but he wanted something very pure to intake. Christiana? So if we're talking about intake of something pure, what might we be, be intaking? God's love. God's love. That's not what I'm going for. Ah. Mm. <laughs> because honestly, as we start to engage this will to love, we're not always receiving God's love yet. We're just coming out of all these addictions and facade and, you know, we, we're using our will in this new way but it doesn't necessarily mean God's love is coming into us. It's great. I mean, it's the most nourishing thing you could intake. But there's something else, something more practical, more tangible. Uh, yep, Steve? Um, water. Water? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I recommend that, obviously. But, no, I'm speaking almost symbolically. What would, what would water represent? Anyone I haven't heard from? Die? Yeah. It's... You kick yourself. I don't know. I just have a go at humility. I have to engage humility. What is pure and clean and is the basis of what everything is built on? Eloisa? Or, oh, yep. Feeling a bit of pressure here. Um, is, it, is it truth, yes. like God's laws and stuff? Yes. We want to drink in truth. We want to drink it in. It's a pure substance that is going to sustain us as we grow our will to love. Okay. So how are we going to do that practically? Like what's, what, is, what do I mean by that? Eloisa again. Oh, sorry, Joanne, I didn't see you there. We'll go to you next. Yeah. Um, with the truth, I think it's like, I um, can't remember, already said today, like um, that's what we can rely upon, like God's truth. We can see that. We can actually like get feedback from that. Yep. So what God's laws. If we're growing this will to love, how will we interact with truth? What will we do? Okay, we, what we're doing is we're stretching ourselves emotionally. We're taking opportunities to love. We're not giving up. We're, su we're surrounding ourselves with material and relationships that uphold love. How are we going to be with truth? Uh, Louise? Or oh, Joanne, did you have the mic yet? No, if we go to Louise and Joanne. Oh, just speaking in truth. Speaking truth. Okay, act, we're going to acting in truth. Speak truth, act in truth. Yep, Joanne, do you have more to add to that? Um, well, for me personally, it would mean um, giving up watching a lot of crappy TV programs and doing things like 
reading through the mists and things like that. Yes, that, and I would put that under your nourishing, your nourishing spiritual okay. substances, if you like. But this truth part, we're going to speak it, we're going to live in it, which is kind of a loose way to say we're going to speak it. And what else, Barbara? Be open to receiving it. Open to <laughs> receiving it. We're going to drink it in like that water. We're going to want it Be all a the sponge. time. Yes, a sponge for it. We're going to seek it out. And not just receive it, we'll seek it out from people. Like Paige and Kerry when they're in Kenya, help, could you give us some feedback on this situation? You know, they sought out the truth. They wanted to know. How else do we encounter truth? How else are we going to ha have truth, drink in this truth? Joy? Um, Really looking at a law of attraction, it's what that's bringing us. Yeah, reflecting sincerely on what we're attracting and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So how does that sound? <laughs> Rachel? Sure. Yeah, I... F I feel like because I don't know what love is that I've engaged lots of things or I thought I was being loving and just to get addictions met and so were the other people. And I feel like at the moment that there's nothing that I can do except be in this in an environment like this. Or, and so I kind of hide myself away and I, I'm thinking about where I can implement this in my life and I just feel like, yeah, it, it, nobody wants to know, like the whole world sort of doesn't want to know that truth. So how do you, if you're being loving and, and honouring that they don't want that, how mm -hmm. do you engage and to take opportunities? And Can you see that when we want to love someone, we want to love them regardless of what they want? So they might not want to know divine truth, but we'll want to love them. If, if we have this will to love, we'll want to love them. And we'll understand that being truthful is a part of love. So we won't live in our facade and we won't accept their facade coming towards us. And that would be engaging our will to love. So does that mean not saying the truth necessarily because I don't want to hear it, but knowing that inside of ourselves? Or? When you say not saying the truth, what do you mean? Not saying the divine truth or not saying the truth of what's happening? I just feel like I'm just trying to imagine situations that I can put myself in to stretch emotionally because and and for it to be continuously loving like I imagine yeah I'm sort of imagining way ahead I guess but my experience in the past has been that that hasn't gone so well <laughs> and and isn't that the bit where it's a bit painful and we want to give up yeah we go oh nobody wants it I'm going back to my house <laughs> We're avoiding our grief. Like when you started to talk to me, you got quite teary, didn't you? Because it brings up a feeling in you. And if you let yourself feel that feeling, it will help you grow your will to love. Yes. It's an investment, you know, a sadness you have yeah. about what happens when you be yourself around others. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I feel like there are opportunities to stretch yourself emotionally, to love, to make choices to love every single day. Every single day. And given that a lot of you are not currently challenging your addictions or challenging your facade, you, you have material to work with straight away. Stretch yourself to let those things go. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to ask Cornelius back. How's my time, honey? I'm way over. Yeah. We might wrap up. I've got no idea. What is the time? Oh, I've got the clock. <laughs> it's 20 past three. No, no, it's 4 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You right if we keep going? Do you need a loo break or anything like that? You're okay. Okay. All right, Corny. Can I have you back? Yeah, I'm here. Briefly. <laughs> you here? Awesome. Okay. Now, I brought my weights from home. Can I get you to pick one up? Oh, yep. All right. Now, we're going to have some fun with Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> Is there... 
inclusive of him. Oh, not at him, inclusive of him. Okay, <laughs> um, what I want you to do, right, Corny, you're not allowed to lift the weight until we direct you to, okay? Uh-huh. Heavy already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's put him out of his misery. On the count of three, we're going to tell him to lift. All right? One, two, three. Lift. Okay. And again. One, two, three. Lift. Wow, he did a good job, didn't he? Let's clap. <laughs> Woo! Good on you, Corny. Awesome. <laughs> I should have made them a bit lighter, hey? Okay. Now I'm trying to draw an analogy with you. What do you think I'm trying to demonstrate? If we think about will, our will to love as a muscle. And right then, Corny couldn't lift until we all yelled lift. Cecily? I was going to say making a choice to... But no, did he really getting. engage his choice much there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Eloisa? If we wait for, like, our personal assistance group to tell us what to do <laughs> and then, like, cheer us on at the end, we're not really going to get muscly very fast, are we? We aren't. <laughs> when you went to the gym, Corny, did you have your personal cheer squad there going <laughs> lift and clapping you every time you did? It was just all me. All in your head. Yeah. So it was an internal cheer squad. Yeah. Can you see? That would be handy, wouldn't it? Encouraging yourself, telling yourself the truth. You can do it. God designed you to be able to embrace this will to love. You did it. Well done. Well done. Let's do it again. But when what I see a lot of people doing is relying on other people for their will to love. It's relying on others to go, come on, you can do it. You'll be right. You'll be right. Oh, look, you did it. That's good. And really... That person is not, if they're dependent on that kind of encouragement, they're not coming to really understand the power of their own will, are they? They're saying, look, I can't do it unless you tell me I can. And we're not going to grow our will muscle very quickly if we do that. Okay, let's try another analogy. Cornelius, can I get you to, I put all of the other weights from home into that big box. Can Uh you just lift that up for me? Yeah. Right, you're right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, can put it down. <laughs> okay, can I get uh, Felix? Can I get you to come up and lift up that box? Just yeah, just yourself. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 it's actually a box for the phone. So you can put it down, thank you, and sit down. So what's the analogy I'm trying to draw there? What's it like when Cornelius is lifting the the box of foam, making out that it's a really big deal, he's really using his will to love right now? Diana? (laughs) That you shouldn't go by other people's experiences, you should have your own. Uh, yeah, not quite, but that is, that's a valid point. Yeah, Alwyn? Don't anticipate what you're not really aware of or sure of. No, it's actually about the facade. Yeah, you were onto it, Alan. Yeah. It's about when we... When we go, oh, yeah, I'm totally loving, yeah, I just did all this stuff, it's, I'm just wonderful. We might not say it, but that's the feeling. It's a big facade of love and we haven't grown our muscle at all. When we go off and volunteer at the homeless shelter and tell 25 people on the way and 15 people on the way back and while we're there we sit back and read a magazine but go, I really love homeless people. You know, how much have we developed our will muscle, our will muscle to love? Not at all, not at all. So this development of your will to love, growing that muscle, it's a very personal thing that is dependent upon you looking at those first things that I mentioned and we're going to look at them for the rest of the week and then engaging some of these things, stretching emotionally, taking opportunities, not giving up when it gets too hard or a bit painful, surrounding yourself, stopping, sitting up, like all the things that... Bring, deplete you spiritually. So what are the things that deplete you spiritually? How much does sitting on Facebook 
really enhance your spirituality. Dealing with people in another facade, presenting your facade. How much is gossiping in the supermarket line? How much is talking about the weather? How much does... All of these things that we do a lot of that deplete us spiritually, we're going to have to cut cut them out, aren't we? Engaging with people who we know are really cynical, who we know are just going to berate us. And how much do we drink down the lies of the world? The world out there thinks God doesn't exist, love has no power, all of those things. How many times do we find ourselves agreeing with that, even internally, and changing our will accordingly? We're going to have to stop drinking down those lies. Okay. Well, I have to wrap up. I have homework for you, and it is... to ask yourself what you are going to do to, one, stretch yourself and seek out opportunities to love. Two, to make that stretching of yourself regular. How are you going to do that. Three, change your daily activities and relationship towards those that uphold love. Repeat the third one, yep. Change your daily activities and relationships towards those that uphold love. And four, change your exposure to and engagement with truth. Yep. Change your exposure to and engagement with truth in your daily life. Page. With uh, number three. Yes. And also number one. Yes. So stretching. Yes. Emotionally. And also engaging with relationships that uphold love. Yes. Is there a... It's also changing your relationships to uphold love. Okay. Okay. Because I was thinking of like a family situation. Yep. Where it may stretch you to spend time with your family and also give you the opportunity to uphold love and maybe teach them something about love. Be careful even of the when, desire Even when t- they don't. Yeah. No, you see, I feel like this desire to teach them about something about love, you're getting way ahead of the game. Okay. And if they haven't asked to learn about love, you're yeah. not even respecting their free will. Okay. So be careful of going out there going, yep, I'm going to be exemplary, like, example of love, and they'll teach everyone about love. Yeah. Just focus on, so being I've got yourself, to learn about love. Being yourself with them. Yeah, upholding the principles of yeah. love yeah. with them. Yeah. That's... Which entail yeah. the principles of free will, truthfulness, yeah. all of these things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. No worries. We're going to be learning about love infinitely, you know. So let's focus on being students. 
Um, and then when we're really good students, we'll naturally start teaching people. Yeah. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you, Cornelius, for my demo. Um, I'm sorry that we've run over time. We're going to have to tighten our ship a little bit for tomorrow. Um, but it's been a pleasure to be with you all. And um, <laughs> dinner will be in uh, 25 minutes. We're going to do, if you're happy to do it, we'll do the personal truth sessions after dinner. So dinner four to five, five thirty. You want to come back here or you want to? We'll do one session. And do you want to do it at five thirty? Yep. So five thirty back here. And do you want to, do you have you sorted out who it is with? Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>